afternoon to everyone. I must say that today we are all blessed to have amongst us Swami Mitrananda. He's a direct disciple of Swami Chinmayananda and uh, he's one of those few young people in India, I believe, who actually can bring a lot of change and enthuse people. I'm so thankful that today again we got this particular opportunity to have Swami Mitrananda here in uh, Sai International School. Transforming Indians to transform India is one of the goals that uh, the Chinma Mission is looking forward to and also uh, it is one very important need of the hour. And now I would be requesting Swamiji please, to please take over the dais. My salutations to everyone assembled here. Pranam, good evening. I'm extremely happy to be here with you. We are on a 238 days uh, yatra across India. So we have covered, uh, today is the 104th day. We started on May 8th, flagged off by Abdul Kalamji. It was this initiative, he flagged it off, uh, and then uh, we miss him today. And uh, so it is the 104th day, we are moving across uh, 28 states in India and, and covering around 150 towns, probably reaching out to more than 24,000 kilometers. So far, we have addressed more than one lakh youngsters across uh, five states in India, and this is the sixth state we have come in. From here, we go to Jharkhand and then to Bengal. And then we further go to Meghalaya, Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Kashmir. It's a big tour. What we do in this is we go around conducting and inspiring and making people aware of certain basic things sometimes in India we are not aware of. So our whole attempt is only this and uh, we had the good wishes of Dr. Kalam taking this initiative. Transforming Indians to transform India. This was a very, very pet subject uh, to Dr. Kalam. We discussed with him and he was more than happy. We did a quiz on this uh, two years back. Some of you must have participated. Look, yes, very good. We did a quiz on this and then after that we said we have to do these workshops around and or at least talks around the country to make people aware. And long before I did a program, uh, since this is Kalam's uh, pet subject, I need to tell you something about him before I get into my uh, subject. Long back I met him, I have met him many times when he was not even president of India. Uh, as a professor, uh, you know, a speaker in Anna University, I had a couple of meetings and once when he was president, I happened to meet him and this was, uh, he gave me an appointment for the morning 8 o'clock in Chennai. He was coming from Delhi. And then there were so many calls. I had, I was on a lecture so my phone was off. When I put it on, there were like some 7-8 missed calls. And uh, it was all from Delhi and saying, Dr. Kalam wants to pre the appointment if it's okay with you to tonight 11.30. And this was around 6.30, 7, 6.30 I start my lecture and goes till 8. And that too in Raj Bhavan, uh, governor's house in Chennai. So I said, I'm fine with it. By then he was on the flight. So he's not sure whether the meeting is on or not. Uh, when he lands up only he will know. And I, I sent word to Rashtrapati Bhavan saying, yes, we take this up. I'm meeting him at 11.30. We sat together at 11.30. This man was so fresh. 11.30 p.m completely fresh and he had in his face childlike curiosity just to listen and I was talking to him on an initiative that time we took up called Awakening Indians to India. So on that we were talking and my meeting was supposed to be for 15 minutes I just want one letter from him so that he gives this letter and we take it across the country 
and to more people to be in, uh, involved, inspired, etc. But he liked the project and we went on from 11.30 p.m. past midnight, another 45 minutes, 12.45. And I'm like, I don't want to strain him, let me go away against my will. You ask me, I don't want that movement to stop, I would continue. And twice I told him, sir, you must have had a long day. And I'm sure you're going to have a long day tomorrow. I don't want to take your time. No, 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 no. This is for India. We need to discuss. And he, he won't let us go. I mean, that was him. Okay. So this uh, uh, yatra which we go around was also flagged off by him on the occasion of uh, Swami Chanmayananji's birth centenary. Swami Chanmayananda was one of those uh, rare saints of India who was an agnostic and an atheist earlier who did not believe in God and from there he transformed. So we are celebrating, I'm from Chinmaya Mission, so we are celebrating uh, his birth centenary and that was flagged off by him and this is one of the initiatives. We Indians, there are many levels of transformation. I'm going to talk about one aspect only now. Generally we do, it's a three hour workshop and uh, that's when, when we need the presentation and everything but we are running uh, we don't have the three hours neither do you or me we don't have that for today another occasion probably uh, so this is uh, we talk about seven levels of transformation the physical fitness emotional unfoldment intellectual clarity spiritual cultural patriotic vision universal vision this is what is the seven levels we speak so as person takes care of the body, he takes care of the mind, he takes care of the intellect. And then spiritual and cultural, vision for India and universal vision. Both patriotic vision and uh, universal vision. So today, I, in my travel across India, I have found uh, in India we need to make one very important change. And that's impo very important because it, it, will, it can change India a lot. And that's with the youth. Coming, walking into your school, I was very, very impressed seeing the different leaders, pictures, and very, the school is definitely a school with a difference. And yet here I would like to ask, if I show you a picture of Satish Dhawan, how many of you would recognize it? If I show you the picture of Vikram Sarabhai, how many of you would recognize it? Thank you. If I have to show you the picture of Mahendra Singh Dhoni, how many of you would recognize it? Sachin Tendulkar, Katrina Kaif, uh, okay, hands down. Friends, this is the point. India needs a drastic change. We need to recognize people of substance. We are more aware of people of glamour. The field of entertainment, definitely they made a difference to us and we, we are entertained constantly in sports as well as uh, uh, cinema, we are entertained, music and dance. But please remember that is entertainment. Sarabhai, Satish Dhawan, they were mentors of Abdul Kalamji. Without Vikram Sarabhai, I don't think India would have advanced in space technology. He was responsible for us to fly rockets up. He was responsible for us to put up satellites. And today India is so advanced in it that uh, many countries, including some of the nations in Europe, ask us for help, saying, can you help us host satellites for them? And we do it. This happened when uh, in 1980s, late 70s, uh, India had this ambition of I mean, you know, installing the satellites. In late 70s, when we took this up, the rest of the world, rest of the world laughed at us. They said, India, underdeveloped nation, too ambitious. 
forget it these guys can't do it and you really want you really mean that you're going to shoot a rocket and then launch a satellite we said uh, and then india believed in it the prime minister that time was indira gandhi and she encouraged and the whole world was waiting to see can india do this because they never believed that time only four nations in the world launched their own satellites india was the fifth nation attempting so they never thought we can do this and we shot our first one the department which kalam was heading had a flaw everything was set and uh, the computer announced saying you can't take it off there's a flaw these people said no let's not go now everybody is set and we sure it up it went up 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 took a turn crash landed in bay of bengal imagine our scientist some of the people in the in india itself said this is too huge money invested we should not waste this kind of a money why should india do this all these kind of questions were there even before and then we take off and it lands in the sea flop just think the rest of the world laughed at us laughed at us saying what the hell the indians can do why are they like this i mean too ambition for a underdeveloped country trying to fly rockets up forget it ridiculed to that extent that the press and the media were waiting to catch these young people if there are a lot of talks of kalam now in the youtube moving around where this incident he narrates in one of that when the flop happened they were all tired and he everyone was exhausted satish dhawan his mentor puts all the scientists behind these young boys behind kalam was young he said you guys be there i'll talk to the press he went and he looked at the press and he told yes in science you keep you make couple of attempts you do fail i take the responsibility leave it to me we flopped but please understand attempts have to be made and he took the responsibility he faced the press and that must have been a very hard time he didn't allow these young people actually the flaw was in kalam's department india had the courage again these are the scientists these are the heroes that's why i want to talk to you about them they had the guts to say in 6 months time we will do this again now that's a very big decision many would have hidden behind the carpet not to show their face again because ridiculed by the whole world in 6 months time these heroes of india said we will launch the satellite again let us do it and in 6 months time everything is set sri hari kota became the center of news again the hindu newspaper was very sarcastic imagine the discouragement the media gives to our scientist the discouragement the hindu newspaper came up with a cartoon fishermen don't venture into the sea bright sunny day you understand bright sunny day fishermen don't venture into the sea why down indian scientists are shooting rockets this is this is the encouragement scientist in this country has so sarcastic imagine the team which was involved have to look at something this that morning and we did and it was a success our rocket story is so interesting you know we carried our rocket parts in bullock carts the first rocket launch happened and the parts were carried in bullock carts and the scientists were going in cycle sitting double somebody will hold some parts of the rocket sitting doubles this is how we did and today we dominate and we were the fifth country in the in the world to to successfully launch and today we have a facility we can we at one go we can launch 32 35 satellites together how many of us have benefited look at the nation's progress economically because of these people look at the nation's progress scientifically because of these people 
we don't know their pictures isn't it we show that picture we don't know indian youth needs one transformation give glamour its value give substance the real value what it deserves what we do today is we give so much value to the glamour that substance is for, forgotten substance is not noticed there could be so many people with substance they are not considered someone with little glamour we make a big deal of them this transformation we need if youth in india can do this you will see people of substance really rising up people of substance would make a difference and they should become the role models today we don't have them so many people we won't even know how these people are how they lived what kind of a life they had so science te- technology people of substance never do we know any agricultural scientist names at least one two people who are the, who are the names perfect c subramaniam m s swaminathan they worked with agriculture and they made a difference please remember when we got independence we were importing food not even self sufficient we were importing food we didn't have these are the people who brought us to self sufficiency and to a point today we can even export great intelligence went behind ms swaminathan could never be a poster boy in our country we won't know him india failed somewhere to value substance and we value glamour let's change this and this needs to be done with people like you at your age you must bring a change start valuing people of substance that makes a difference today we don't we don't we only anybody who is glamorous we would know and we are lost in it actually so if we can make this change so much can happen let me tell you another person whom i'm sure many many people in india would not have even heard of this name in tamil nadu there was a person by name kaundanya somewhere in 4th century he sailed from tamil nadu to cambodia do you understand what it is to sail 100 years ago and what it is to sail today today when you sail you have gps in the middle of the sea your ship can be spotted and you can put the gps on and you know how to reach 100 years ago there was no gps you need to depend on the sun and the stars in the night you have to depend on the stars and take your ship into the sea in the daytime it's the sun i'm talking about indians were sailing 2000 years ago indian i like some of you to do a research on this and it could be a beautiful thing you can present to the school indian sea trade it's a very very interesting subject indian sea trade indian trade 2000 years ago through sea brilliant subject to research on and 2000 years ago we were sailing going across can you imagine that time there were no motorized boats no controls you have to depend on wind southwest monsoon wind so then immediately they'll put up the sails now the wind has come go into the sea very gutsy people when going to the sea that way open up the sails with the wind they used to venture into the high seas and reach that side and wait for the wind to come back towards the side east monsoon ah put up the sails again for two or three months live in the other land they were crossing high seas and orissa was one of them very advanced sea trade we had from orissa you go to bali you know the orissa influence in bali you have the bali yatra ha huh? i tell you this bali yatra should be a eye opener for you 
Today you celebrate Bali Yatra making paper boats. Put few things inside. Pulses, rice and vegetable in a paper boat and then you send them. Your forefathers went on real boats. Into the sea, very gutsy. I mean, this is what it is. So this Kaundanya went. He picked up few people and he went. He crossed the high seas, reached Cambodia. So if you have to go to Cambodia, you have to go via, uh, understand, you have to go around Malaysia and then go into South China Sea and get there. Brilliant. Uh, and he must have had some 40, 50 people and stored food or managed his way. And it must have been months for him to go. I'm talking about this hero in the 4th century. He goes there, must have been a very handsome man. The princess of Cambodia, Soma Devi, falls in love with him. They get married and he becomes the king of Cambodia. We Indians don't know this. And he sets it up with Divakar Pandit, the plan to introduce this, cult, this culture. They were worshipping nature like, like Vedic Hindus were worshipping nature. They were also worshipping nature and he wanted to bring this Pauranic kind of a worship of a temple. The biggest temple you have today in the world is Angkor Wat. Angkor Wat in Cambodia, actually it's an Indian word, Nagar Vatika is called Angkor Wat and that's the biggest temple on earth. This Kaundanya and Divakar Pandit make the plan for it. And Kaundanya dies. The next two generations, some other, somebody came and built it up. But the point here is the man went from here, won people out of love and affection, introduced something and, and look, he had the vision to build the biggest possible temple on earth. The biggest temple is in Angkor Wat in Cambodia, not in India. The second biggest is Bodabutur. Third one, third biggest temple is in India, which is in you know, Tirunelveli, Nalayapan temple it is called. That's the third biggest. Then the fourth one is Meenakshaman temple. So the, he had the vision to build something. This man's name we don't know. What he must have been, what must be this personality to have this vision and saying, let's go into the sea. And moves into the high seas and reaches somewhere Language, he speaks Tamil and there is a Cambodian dialect. What must be the affection, the vibrations, the personality by himself? Words didn't, words were not there. He could communicate and they liked him. And then that's a love story. The princess falls in love with him and he becomes a king and builds a thing. Now this Indian we don't know. People of substance in our country are being forgotten. And what do we believe? All of us, I, when I was like you, I read it. Vasco da Gama found a sea route to India. When? 14th century. And we had 2000 years sea trade. And we were trading almost to African countries. We were going up to African ports. South of uh, Cape of Good Hope. We, we were trading that far. And then we were made to believe Vasco da Gama came to India and he found sea root. Ridiculous, isn't it? But that's what we believe. Unless India wakes up to, to recognize substance, young India wakes up to recognize substance, we will not have much. Because people of substance are not noticed, they will not be encouraged. And people of glamour occupies. If you can do this today. In your room. The field of your choice. It's the field which you are inspired. Keep one person of substance. Just not entertainment. Not the people from entertainment world who entertains us. But people of substance. One poster. That can be the beginning of making a difference. It shows you value it. If so, I mean a school like uh, reputed as this can take up something like we are for substance, then we make great difference. So this transformation, if we can work on, that we start in us, inside, deep down, we value substance, we would make a difference. 
Aha. So I thought this is, would be a start. Now, uh, next 10 to 15 minutes, we can uh, continue with interaction. You have anything to discuss, I would be more happy to discuss with you. Yes, please. Yeah. What can I uh, say? Please sit down. I got a question. In the world of uh, so much of hectic thing and so much of studying schedules, how would I have even time to find out people of substance? If I love something, I believe in it, I will go and do it. You understand? If I believe this is important, we would do it. Because I strongly believe that I must talk to our youth in India that let us gear up to substance. Because you will be a person of substance, not of glamour. Glamour at a higher level is very different. But the heroes must be people of substance. That's why if we, if we ask, you know, like I, I've been asking many people in many places, Name some successful people. Abdul Kalam, Sachin Tendulkar, uh, and name goes on, you know, like the people who have really made famous, they are considered successful. Another change. People who have become famous is equated to success. Your mother is a failure. Was she a successful mother? But doesn't come into your mind? You understand? Success is rated to being famous. No, success is rated with substance. Not with famous. Not all can be famous. But that doesn't mean someone with substance is a failure just because he's not popular. So we need to understand success also correctly. So when I feel something, this is important and we need to do this, we have to do. So I tell you, don't have to do too much. Today, I, tell, I mean, in today's world, it's much more easy. In our time, it was difficult. For you, it's so easy. Next to God, who knows all answers is Google. Isn't it? And now it's again an Indian who is heading it. And there's a big joke. How many of you understand Tamil here? Anybody? Okay. Uh, let, let me share the joke. It, there's a, it's a pun on the word. Pichai in Tamil means begging. So the joke goes, Google has to beg for an Indian. You understand? <laughs> Pichai. <laughs> okay. Coming back, next to God is Google who knows all answers. And they have worked it out so well. The search engines are so different. Artificial intelligence has gone in so much that you, they guess what can be your next question of search. Now that's brilliant, isn't it? That you are searching and the Google assumes what could be your next search. So when you type one letter that will pop up the question. Like I tried just to, uh, somebody told me that Google does this. So I said, okay, let me try sons of Rama. And Google answered, love and kush. Then I said, uh, will the Google guess what I want next? I wrote only sons. Down came Lakshman Bharat Shatrugna. That's, that is artificial intelligence. You understand which has gone there. So Google is, is indeed, uh, you can get any answer at your tips, at your fingertips. So search today is very difficult. Earlier, if I have to find out who are the children of Lakshman, I need to find a pundit who knows about it, a scholar who knows about it, or I have to go to a library, 
take the book and search in the book where it would be today you write the sentence you get so if you make your search little more people of substance you will find more data available and there are enough and more people go on go on and search who are the people who made the indian rocket story success of it search you will get who are the people who are the indians who contributed to physics and that way if you do you do get substance you find everywhere so search is made so easy today and you and with minimum time you can get a lot of information of uh, people of uh, high caliber or high substance yes any other question L right now what i've come to experience is whenever i ask an adult some question they say go to google and slowly uh, what i'm feeling it is interfering in the student teacher relationship or student and adult relationship so can you say something on yeah. that i i take class for teachers sir we run uh, around the uh, 90 chinmaya vidyalaya schools so we constantly talk to teachers and i tell teachers your biggest friend is google your biggest enemy is google a teacher has to understand so does a parent your friend is google your enemy is google friend because if you want something it saves time and it gives you data and then you verification becomes easy once you have a data you can verify it quickly so getting data is so quick for the teacher the students also have the same data so when the teacher comes to a class the students already know it does it's a new challenge which we never had before okay so it is something which we need to understand so i tell the teachers beat the google have some information which is not there in the google and i do in my talks kaundanya is not in google very minimum information you will have in about kaundanya you need to do research so when i speak i do say hey listen this is not in google oh okay not in google hmm so that means you need to know it from me so the teachers have to beat the google so that's lot lots lots of the hard hard job to do it okay hello sir yes, good sir. afternoon sir my name is raj so i believe uh, each and every person in india is categorized by some other factors let it be language let it be religion caste each and everything so each and every state has different history so what do you feel as a indian that we need to know about each and every state each and every religion language or about only india it is important i and you please know it is important i know i need to know about myself i need to know about my family i'm starting where the first thing i need to know about myself my strength my weakness my inner calling you know all this about me i should first know and then i should know about my family i need to know about it and from there i expand to india we should not stop there we have to expand with a universal vision that's why in the beginning when i said seven levels of trans transformation one is patriotic the first one is physical emotional intellectual there i get to know about me cultural that is about the place i live in then i develop patriotic vision then i go further with a universal vision because we hindu followed for a long time what we call as loka samasta sukhino bhavantu that was part of a prayer any being anywhere in the world in the universe not just in the world anywhere in the universe let that person be happy was the final line of a prayer when we do all the puja etc the final line would be loka samasta sukhino bhavantu let every one in this universe be happy so that was the vision so but it starts from me so you have to know about your strength not just the culture or the state where you are first you need to know about yourself and then you expand from there we need to have a better holistic vision of india if we are not guided well we will be limiting ourselves to a state level thinking only fail to understand because india is beautiful not just because of one state india is beautiful because it accommodates so many varieties so many varieties and that makes it rich so you go to let's say you go to assam or you go to arunachal pradesh and there is something so beautiful about it 
and that it makes it very very rich so india's richness is because of its variety and if i can appreciate that variety it would be so much beautiful i would like to say what tagore said tagore said this uh, i love india not because i'm born in india india provides variety to the world so india has something much larger that's that's more important it's not just because i'm born in a state i love that state i'm born and around my environment i need to know but the vision must be that big you got the point or you need a little more good thank you so much i enjoyed talking to you thank you